Hello everyone, today we wanted to talk with you about suture needles. And when working in the operating room, you quickly learn that there is a large variety of suture needles. So in this presentation, we're gonna talk a bit about the differences in suture needles. So in the previous slide, I mentioned that we were gonna expand on the cutting versus the reverse cutting needle. So that's what we're gonna do now. Let's take a moment and we're gonna expand on the cutting versus the reverse cutting needle. And first, let's talk about the design of the cutting needle. The cutting needle's edge is on the inner curvature of the needle. Here's a, like a picture of it. And you can see that the apex of the needle is at um, the top of the needle. This needle design makes the cutting needle like ideal for very tough tissue. Examples of areas you might see this used would be like in the nasal cavity, sometimes in the oral cavity, and then in some cases where you have um, tendon and ligaments that's very tough, you can see this needle used. And then sometimes scar tissue also, because scar tissue can be so dense and fibrous. And now we're gonna talk a little bit about the reverse cutting needle. The reverse cutting needle's edge is on the outer curvature of the needle, and the apex of your triangle is at the bottom. So the design of this needle is ideal for tough tissue, such as skin, it's perfect for skin, fascia, some tendons and ligaments, and the use of this needle in the OR is popular because it causes a little less tissue trauma than the conventional cutting needle. So I wanted to expand on that um, concept of one needle causing less tissue trauma than another. So we're gonna talk about this concept called tissue cut through. And to me, the most important distinction between these two needles has to do with tissue cut through. So here, this is an image that I got off the internet that is very simple but beautifully illustrates the idea of tissue cut through. So let me explain. Image A depicts the path that the conventional cutting needle takes and note that the cutting needle leaves behind a triangle hole in the tissue with the apex of the triangle pointing towards the edge of the wound, pointing towards the top. Having the apex pointing towards the surface of the wound allows for the suture material to cut through the tissue easier, especially if there's any tension placed on the suture. So for example, um, if you pull the suture to tie it, or if the wound swells, or if the patient um, is moving a lot without the tissue being healed, there could be more, there's a higher, probability for tissue cut through with using the conventional cutting needle. In contrast, image B, that's an example of a reverse cutting needle's path. And see how the base of the triangle is closest to the edge of the wound, so that flat part of the triangle is the part that's closer to the edge of the wound. Having this triangular base be close to your wound edge allows for greater contact area between the tissue and the suture material. So it therefore decreases the risk of tissue tear through. So although a cutting needle is at times indicated in surgery, the reverse cutting needle is actually a little more commonly used, especially for skin closure. And that's just because we try to be as delicate as possible with tissue in the operating room. So now we just wanted to take a second and just tie everything up, give a little conclusion. And we wanted to start by saying that this was just an introduction to suture needles. There's a lot more to talk about and um, hopefully we'll talk about more in the future. And then we wanted to say that the design of sutural needles, it has evolved so much over time. We see a lot more variety and um, it's constantly changing. So if anybody's interested in learning and um, where suture needles are going and um, what new suture options are becoming available, I'll be happy to uh, talk about that in a different presentation. Just leave um, something in the comments for me. And then we wanted to remind everyone that the four suture needle designs that we touched on, not the only designs, but the ones that we touched on in this presentation were 
conventional cutting needles, reverse cutting needles, taper point needles, and blunt needles. And lastly, we wanted to remind everyone that although your surgeon ultimately has the decision of what needle to use in a case, it's important to understand how nuanced needle choices are and why you can't just substitute one needle for another um, because it could cause damage to a patient. And we just wanted to thank everybody for listening. Let us know if you have any questions.